fish or they possibly don't. A familiar situation in 2011 in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. For Stewart, a win would be two for two in the chase. For Boyd, uh, three to go. Uh, I didn't like the sound of his voice right there. Sound like it may have stumbled on him. That was Boyer's radio. Yeah. Denny Hamlin looks like he's out of gas. Oh man, that's a tough break for Denny Hamlin. Yeah, so, he got to Jeff Gordon's back bumper for that fifth spot right before that happened. So we've already seen one run drive. And Stewart is stalking. Report from Pit Road. Boyer is questioning whether he's running out of fuel. Here comes Stewart. Yeah, there it is. There it he's is. out. Stewart to the lead. Two laps to go. Now does Tony have enough fuel? It was this race a year ago. Stewart led coming off turn four to the white flag. And he ran out of gas. Is it going to be different this time? He's got a big lead. He can sit on that. He doesn't have to run very hard. White flag is up this time. One lap to go. Looks like Brad Keselowski took second away from Greg Biffle. Final lap in New Hampshire. Watching Tony Stewart to see if he's got enough fuel to make it the advantage he has. He's up seven seconds on Keselowski now as other Take people care, begin to fade. Don't worry about the Take a drink, I got this. <laughs> it sounds like he's got plenty of fuel. So if he was stalking him, he knew just what he was doing. Two wins in a row Boy, to start the chase. Row. Way to go. Tony Stewart wins at New Hampshire. Wow, that's impressive by Tony Stewart and this team. Brad Keselowski, great day. Greg Biffle out of fuel coming to the checkers. Let's see if Jeff Gordon can beat him. Nope, looks like Biffle beat Gordon to the line. But Gordon was able to stretch the gas to get there. Keselowski gets second, Biffle third, Gordon fourth, Brian Vickers comes home fifth. Dale Earnhardt Jr. possibly out of gas coming to the checkers also and got a right front. Well, Matt Kenseth comes home sixth. What a rebound for him. <laughs> oh, another crazy finish. And Vince, this year at New Hampshire is going to come out a lot better for Darian Grubb. Tony Stewart's crew chief. I'll tell you what, they are celebrating here in the 14 box. And uh, Darian, a lot better finish this time than a year ago, huh? How good does that feel? Feels really good. Uh, way to start the chase here. This awesome team, SHR. I can't say enough for what everything that they've done starting to chase off two wins. We can't think anything better. Well, they had a few slip through their hands early in the season, but they have put it together here to start the chase. Back to back wins, Alan. I asked the question, could they get on a roll with the win at Chicago land into this championship? I'd say, I'd say yes. Yeah. <laughs> A good year winning moment for Tony Stewart at New Hampshire Motor Speedway and Tony's team. Get that checkered flag and celebrate. Smokes on a roll as we go NASCAR nonstop, presented by Goodyear. Tony Stewart in victory lane for a second week in a row. And certainly going to enjoy this September trip to the New Hampshire Motor Speedway a lot more than he and his team did 12 months ago when leading coming to the white flag that 14 cars fuel tank ran dry and Clint Boyer went by to go to victory lane. Today it was Boyer's fuel tank that ran dry and Tony Stewart went by him and led the final couple of laps to go two for two in the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. Had enough fuel to go and do some celebrating after. <laughs> and on pit road as Stewart went into victory lane, the sportsmanship of the handshake from Clint Boyer. So let us head down to Napa Victory Circle and hear from today's winner, Tony Stewart. Tony Stewart soaking it up. He's the new points leader now with an eight point advantage and just the second driver to ever open the chase with back to back wins. Well, if last week's victory at Chicagoland Speedway gave you guys a shot of confidence, what does this week's win say about this 14 team, Tony? Well, I mean, we we felt like this week when we, weekend was a good opportunity off of the spring. So, uh, you know, we 
Got eight long weeks still, man. It's way too early to be counting chickens right now. You guys had struggled throughout the course of the season during many times, many points. Early in the season, you had some victories slip through your fingers. How frustrating was it during those down times? You ever imagined that you'd be in this position? Well, we got rid of some dead weight earlier this week, so it's made it a lot easier. So uh, it's been a big weight lifted off our shoulders. Just sometimes you got to make adjustments in your life, and uh, we did that, and it's uh, definitely helped this weekend for sure. And these guys have never quit, man. These guys have never given up, and uh, we got a shot at this thing. How about the irony? of last year's race with you running out of fuel and Clint taking the victory and then him running out of fuel today and you getting the win. I know exactly what that feels like. I know exactly how he feels right now. Uh, hey, uh, I saw him slow down down the back and I thought, oh, no, you're kidding me. <laughs> That's not the way you want to win it for sure. But, um, you know, we're in a chase now and we got to get everything we can get. So, uh, you know, I feel bad for him and, and it, it's fun racing him. I mean, he, he had the better car at the end there. We Our only chance was to catch him in lap traffic. But, um, you know, head to head, he was low little better than we were so uh, it's hard to lose them that way but you know when you got we finally got mobile one in victory lane today and uh, shows the last two weeks we've been good on fuel mileage and that's how good mobile one is and how efficient it is and office depot and goodyear and u.s army chevrolet uh, mac tools everybody at mac they're awesome Haas automation uh, the hendrick engine department and chassis department they're doing an awesome job so uh, i forgot them last week and i I hate that because they, they're the reason we're here. So uh, everybody at Stewart Haas Racing and uh, Tom Tieran, this one's for you, buddy. Tony Stewart taking care of business today. It's a seven-point lead in the championship now. Dave? And Jeff Gordon has been debriefing with uh, car owners and friends. Jeff, the good news is up six positions. You are now fifth in the championship. You led the most laps, got a couple of bonus points. But tell us how staying on pit road for as long as you did changed your day. Yeah, I mean, it's frustrating for everybody on this DuPont Chevrolet team. You know, none of us want to put ourselves in that position. Uh, you know, it's a bit of a surprise to all of us that I ran out uh, under green. You know, we were expecting to go a couple more laps, so we're making great horsepower. <laughs> we're not getting good fuel mileage. But Tony, you know, is figuring out a way to do it, so you got to give those guys credit. They got the same engines we have. Um, you know, and, and we, we got to do a better job at it. I got to do a better job at it. But um, at that point when we ran out, I, I didn't know I had to say fuel. I thought, I thought we were in our window and we're just going to come in and do a green flag stop. And, um, you know, gosh, it was just frustrating. We got back out there. And once I got behind guys like Tony, I, I really was just too tight to, to pass him anyway. I certainly wasn't expecting to have to conserve as much as we did there. But, hey, to pull off a top five, that's good. We got what we could out of it. We didn't need to take any chances like we did last week at Chicago. And, you know, all we can do is look at the good good side, you know, and that's what we made gains in the points. Not making enough gains on the leaders, that, that's the only frustrating part. Well, two good sides, a recovery in the points, as he said, and a recovery to fourth place today, Jamie. Brad Keselowski's talking smack on Jeff Gordon going long-winded there. Finishes second today. Within one day and see how long he can swim, man. I bet he could be underwater for an hour. Okay, let's talk about your run today. Jumped up three positions in the points, your third. Highest ever. Your crew chief was stressed out this morning about your car. Did it get that much better, or was it all strategy? Uh, no, we made uh, some good adjustments uh, with about uh, 120, 130 to go. Uh, and it drove up into fourth, which I was really proud of our team for that. And, uh, you know, still played a little strategy. Used the fuel stuff to get up to second. But, uh, you know, we were a legitimate top ten car. Maybe not quite a second place car, but... Uh, Proud of the effort, proud of uh, how we took a track where we were weak at and got a good finish out of it. That's what this chase is all about. And uh, my Merrill White Dodge team, they're getting it done. Hot streak continues when it counts most. Brad Kozlowski second. Doc? Jimmy Johnson climbing out of his car in the garage. Jimmy, I know uh, you, this day had its ups and downs and some frustration there, particularly with 20 to go and you and Kyle. What was going on with the contact? Well, I, I think um, track position was really important, and he was just, you know, racing really hard, which, which is what he's supposed to do. Um, typically, uh, you know, the one lane off the bottom is the lane you give someone when, when they're on the inside of you, and he didn't want to give that lane up, um, and we just made some contact. Um, it wasn't like he was trying to wreck me or anything. He was just being kind of stubborn and end of a race mentality, and uh, when we got together the second time, I think our wheels locked and uh, whipped the wheel out of my hand and bent something in the, the steering up front, but, you know, that was just the... Uh, end of a bad day i mean <laughs> we didn't have a car like we thought we would we were really optimistic yesterday after practice car was was just great uh today just didn't have the speed and
and then uh, track position was some, so important and spit calls didn't work out our way. But, um, you know, we'll uh, take this one on the chin and go on to the next one. You've been in this position before, you know, with uh, down a little bit at the beginning of a chase eight races ago. What's the mindset now for you, maybe winning that sixth title? Um, you just got to take every race as they come. You, you never know what's going to happen. And in my experience of winning five, uh, we lost the points lead due to a wreck on the last lap at Talladega and still came back and won. So anything can happen, but you know, days like this aren't, aren't what you hope for, for sure. Thanks for your time. Yep, thank you. All right, so Jimmy Johnson with an 18th place finish today here at New Hampshire, and we check the championship standings after the second race in the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. Yeah, Jeff Gordon did make a nice move using that conservative strategy to not run out of fuel. Uh, he didn't gain on the leaders, but he did gain six spots. Yeah, just looking at Tony Stewart, uh, the move that they have made here, I don't think any of us could see this coming, but Brad Keselowski, we talked about him possibly getting in this chase the way that they ran, that they could be a sleeper and, a, and battle for this championship, and they're right there. And it's on to Dover for the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. Meanwhile, a couple of guys who are not in the championship who had some good finishes today here in New Hampshire with Dave. Yeah, they sure did, Alan. Fifth place. Um, Brian Vickers, I had to look at him for two seconds there. And third place, Greg Biffle. Let's start with Greg. Greg, best finishing Roush car here today. It's been a while since that's been the case for you. How'd you get there? Well, I mean, you know, we ran there the whole day. Um, you know, we were never out of the top ten. And, uh, you know, just had a really, really good car. And the guys did a great job in the pits. And I'm finally happy that we, we just finished a race where we had been running. You know, I mean, we've run up front. Uh, you know, Chicago, we had something, uh, sheet metal break on the car and here. Nothing happened to the car. We finished where we're running third. We ran out of gas and got beat. Uh, we're running second, but uh, two got by us. But still, just a great day for us. Uh, excited we had Ford 40 MPG on the car. I think it might have helped us a little bit. Great run for him in third today. And Brian Vickers, who tied his season best with a fifth place, Brian. Yeah, it was a good run for us. Uh, the Red Bull Twitter guys did a good job all day. We were good in the first stint, not great. Uh, over adjusted, got way too loose. The second and third stint lost our track position. The last two runs, we were awesome. The car was so good, probably one of the better cars on the track. But we had to pass 20 cars just to get back to the top five and ran out of time. But uh, really proud of the effort by everybody. It's like they say, you got to work on your stuff to be good, and they did today. Dr. Punch? Well, Denny Hamlin trying to get his luck to turn around here, came out of the car, sat on the back of the hauler here, talking to Mike Ford and some of the engineers on the team. And uh, what a frustrating year it has been for Denny Hamlin. Denny, it looked like this was going to be the day that turned it around for you. You guys making a gamble on fuel, and everyone seemed to say on the radio, you thought you were good. Yeah, we thought we were good. And, and that's just another one. It's, it's strategy racing nowadays. And, uh, and we just came up short right there. You know, the only thing I can think of is we were a little bit, uh, we were in cleaner racetrack that last run. Um, but that was the worst fuel mileage we got all day, and I was backing my corner up quite a bit. So there's only two things, you know, either, you know, we, we weren't getting the fuel mileage we thought or we didn't get it full or I just used too much. So, uh, you know, there's uh, we got to work through it and uh, another tough day for us. But, I mean, we're uh, just figuring out what we got to do just to uh, be a little more competitive. Danny Hamlin, no quit in this team. They're going on next week to Dover. Vince. Earnhardt Jr. certainly was a, a solid day for you guys, and you didn't get the finish because of that right front flat, uh, but fin finish up 17th today, but how encouraging is it to run the way you guys ran two weeks in a row? Well, we, yeah, I mean, we want to run like that. We had a great car. We worked really smart all weekend. Second week in a row, we really had a good one and should have finished in the top 10 pretty easily. Uh, we had a flat tire, uh, and then we had uh, you know, about 100 laps to go, and then we had another flat tire right there at the end. Just too much camber. We, we really didn't hit anybody or bang on you know, the wall or anything. Just uh, uh, you know, having a little too much camber gain, getting a little too much travel, and uh, the track did tighten up there at the end to, to really increase wear on the right front. So it's a shame, but uh, and I'm frustrated. You know, I want to win a race. You know, I'd like to win a chase, but I'd like to win a race too. We had a good enough car to do it today, I thought. Dale Earnhardt Jr. Thanks, Dale. Alan?